Hi, I'm David Albright, and today we're going to turn a bowl, and you're probably thinking, boy, he's got those great, cool glasses. This look, looks like John Lennon. Well, I'm not trying to look cool. I am blind, completely blind. I can't see a thing. I can't see any light at all. And I was a woodworker all my life. I grew up with my dad and my grandfather, and I was a woodworker. And six years ago, I went blind, and uh, that's a whole other story. But after that, I, feel, I realized I needed to do something. I, I just couldn't sit around to do anything, and I got back down in my shop, and I called Anthony Harris, and I said, hey, before I went blind, I was kind of playing with the lathe and doing some stuff. I thought, boy, it'd be great to get back on the lathe. Would you help me? And we were on the phone, and there was this complete long silence, and I thought, he's hung up on me. <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh. So uh, finally, this, this voice comes back, and he says, very thoughtfully, he says, I don't think I'm worthy of teaching a blind person. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's the most intelligent answer I've ever heard. So then I had to think about what he said. And then I went back to him and said, well, I don't think I'm worthy of be being blind. I really need your help. And Anthony agreed to help teach me um, how to turn and how to get reintroduced to the, to the lathe being blind. And Anthony can talk about the process of teaching me at some point. But I think in, in uh, poor Anthony, not only had I gone blind and I was willing to work on the lathe, um, there was just a season where I was learning how to be blind and how to, how to cope with that, let alone Anthony would come over a couple times a week and we'd, we'd work on the lathe and do stuff and I'd learn. Anthony, I know, would say, David, can't you feel that? And it's like I'd realize, I've got 10 eyes now. They're all telling me everything and I can't understand why they're all talking to me at once. It's, it's, it's hard going blind. So, uh, but anyway, today what we're gonna do is turn a bowl. I am excited to tell you that I, I enjoy the heck out of turning. Thanks to Anthony and all his effort all the time. And I, every, Anthony's so patient with me. Sometimes he had to teach me stuff two or three times before I, it would sink in enough to make it work and I appreciate that. So what today is, we're going to show you that I really can turn a little bit, and if I make mistakes, you can just giggle and laugh, because I know you guys have never made any mistakes either. So, okay, Anthony, do we, should we say anything else? Well, I think uh, we started with some goals, and that was that we were going to do real turning, not just pins or something like that, um, and we were going to uh, be completely safe. Yeah. Getting hurt wasn't an option. Yeah. Um, and I mean, those were really the guides. We were going to do real turning and we weren't going to get hurt. That's right. Uh -huh. And so we, we started at the very beginning and we took it slow. Yeah. Anthony asked me right away if I wanted to turn with carbide tip tools, the scraper tools, or if I wanted to really turn, turn on real turning tools. And I said that I wanted to be able to do both. I, I like the scraper and I st you'll see me later on today use uh, the uh, carbide tip tools, but I used the spindle gouge and the bowl gouge. I thought for a while that Anthony was just, I thought he was the devil, making me work with the bowl gouge and the spindle gouge. I hated him. It was just so hard, but I really appreciate him encouraging me to learn how to use a spindle gouge. And just, today's my favorite tool. I love it. They both work really well. I don't do quite everything with them, but uh, you know, when there's tear out on the outside of it, you know, I, I really, well, the, the gouge really helps me keep away from that, where the scraper doesn't. It just creates a whole lot of tear out. So, anything else? No, I think we got it. We got it, okay. We got it. Well, here we go, we're gonna start, so, all right, guys. Okay, here's where I start on the bench with a, bl a block of wood. I've got my block of wood here, I've got my, my compass. I wanna find the center of this, this block here. So what I do is I, I start looking for the edges, and realize, okay, it's a little bit too short. I'm gonna open that up a little bit more and push it in and check this, the, the top side there. Left and right is pretty good. Top and bottom aren't too bad. They're pretty close, I'm gonna open up just a, I mean, we're, now we're just talking little tiny bits, not, not a whole lot. Okay, so move it a little bit. The better job I do, the, the easier it is later, of course you know that. Okay, now, got my compass here. What I'm gonna do is just tap it lightly. I, yeah, I've just about wrecked this compass a couple times. Got beat on it too hard, particularly with hardwood. 
what I do is I put my finger right there and I'm going to wallow the compass around just enough to open that hole up just like that. I've got my finger right there. So I pull that compass out. I've still, I still know where that hole's at. Here's a nail punch. I'm going to do this and just follow around. Found the hole right there. That easy. Now, give it some decent wax to start a decent hole there. Still wallow it around here a little quick. Well, that's, that's, this is some hardwood. It, it wanted to grab my nail punch. Again, put my finger right there so I know where the hole's at so I don't have to hunt for it. Take that out. I put this gimbal in here like that. And then I can dig out a little bit deeper hole. I'm just trying to give myself a reference point with my finger that I can feel. Now what happens with the gimbal, it gets in there pretty tight and starts to expand that pretty quickly and it actually brings the wood up along the side of the hole. And right now I can, I can feel that, the wood coming out of the hole. So if this was a rough sawn piece of wood, it would be really tough to spot a tiny hole like that. But now I can go to the drill press and know where that hole's at. Okay, now that I've got the hole marked in the wood, we're over here at the drill press. I've got the drill table down a little bit so I can just lift it up. The trick here for me is to, to lift up the block of wood. This is a brad point bit, so I'm, I've got the bit right inside the hole now. And you see, before I move it, before I drill the hole, but I've got a collar on there. I put that collar on there so I know that's the depth. It will stop there and I won't go below it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is right, bring the table up carefully and not pinch my fingers too badly and keep the pressure on the drill bit in the hole. Okay, I've got that done. Okay, now I've got the drill bit. It's just making contact with the wood. Hold on tight to the wood. I'm going to start the drill press. Down up, that's it. I can lower the table slightly, get away from the drill bit, and get the, the, the uh, wooden shavings off there. Now I can take it over to the bandsaw and cut the edges off. Okay, here we are at the bandsaw. Anthony made this jig for me, and I have a little I have a little dowel sticking up right here. It's gonna fit in the hole. Drop it down on here. There it goes. What I'm trying to do is to center the, the saw blade and the wood. And I'm gonna try it from a couple of sides just to make sure it works. I'm in good shape. I'm not gonna to try to cut a perfect circle. Here we go. I'm just gonna take these edges off. got a good enough circle I can take it over to the lathe and I can start working it from there. And I'm on a brand new lathe that I've never played with before so if you see me stumble a little bit it's like okay. <laughs> Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah.
One of the hardest things for me to learn was spatial relationship. I, I realized this is a brand new lathe to me, and I thought, wow, I'm, I'm picking up real quick. I've mapped it already in my mind where this, this tool rest is, my hand's safe on the tool rest, so I can come over the top. I know my fingers kind of go to it already, but when, when Anthony and I started out in the beginning, I couldn't do that. I was just like total fear of touching this when I shouldn't, getting pinched at the, you know, oh my gosh. But with a lot of time, uh, it, it's working out pretty well. That won't fall off, will it? Yeah, take care. Okay, I have to do a lot of checking to see, um, use my fingers to see what I'm, where, what shape I've got, and do I have the right shape? Okay. I think. Oh, I need. my compass I put a center hole in there earlier and this compass is always set for my the the jaws on my uh, easy wood chuck that I'm going to use here in a second I'm going to make a mortise here um, what's that
così. Thank you. Yes, sir. Just take your time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Kind of wood did you say this well, I was said maple, but I bet it may be almost a pine or something. Really? Yeah. Oh, darn. That would put that wax and oil on it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah, usually it. Yeah. It's a little cleaner, but it's just, yeah. No. Do a lot of sanding from time to time and just stop and kind of sand it. It helps me feel the wood a little bit better. It helps me to figure out where the wood's at and map it in my mind and you know let my fingers know what's going on. Also, sometimes when you're we you all we all do this, we, we feel the 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 sharp edge you can build up sometimes when you're when you're working the wood. And uh, those can be when they're spinning and I'm touching it, those will cut me pretty quick. So I've learned to make sure that they keep the edges rounded off, you know, for the most part, unless I really have a design element that calls for a sharp edge. Okay.
I know better than that. One of the things I bought from Charlie over at Woodcraft was these Easy Wood Chucks. Um, and they are, for a blind person, they're, they're really great. Um, they're real expensive, is the downside. But uh, these jaws are interchangeable. I didn't bring my screwdriver, but uh, I just brought the one set of jaws. But there's this little a pinhole in there. I put a little special screwdriver in there, and the jaw pops off, pops out. The Nova Chuck jaws are fabulous but each jaw generally speaking has I think two screws and those are two little tiny screws of chances and opportunities for me to lose them or have them fall off on the floor and me had to chase them around which I always hate doing but the, the easy wood chucks I got them from Charlie when he was over there at Woodcraft and uh, I really like them they have been I've got several different jaws and uh, I've got larger and smaller and I've got the pin jaws but I found I just really love these There it goes. I want to test it to make sure it's going to 
sit in there and uh, I didn't, it's not uh, too small, I can't get the jaws in. That, um, that tool there, thank you very much. <laughs> Cleaner. Good. Finally found this solution, the Tormax 8. Um, it's, just, it's got a water wheel. It moves away from me. It is slow speed. And uh, it really, no danger to me at all. It's very easy to use. Today I'm going to, to sharpen spindle gouge. Here's the tool rest. We're going to get it started in the tool rest here. I have a little gauge that always gets the right amount of distance on here on the, on the, on the spindle gouge. And I'll put that in here. It's the, press it in there together, tighten it down. I always double check to make sure I've got the right place because trust me, I've done it wrong several times. Okay, now that's done. And the thing that you're not seeing that I, I, I do once and I don't do it again for quite a while is I, take, I put the gauge on this bar and this distance from the bar to the wheel is very important to get the right angle repeatedly. So what you do is you put this on here. And I've already got it set up, but the wheel, the stone wheel, makes contact with these two tiny little wheels right here. As I turn it a little bit, I can feel those little wheels making contact and actually turning. So I know that I've got the right distance on this bar. The more I dress this, this stone, the smaller it gets very slowly, but I, I have to, every so often, I have to remove the bar. Okay, let's remove the gauge here. Put the tool be rest back on. There we go. Okay, the wheel's turning nicely. I've got water coming up already. It's great. Get the tool in position. I take a couple fingers. I just push on the flute here. It makes contact with the stone and does the grinding. And I just rotate it back and forth. I try to do it the same amount of time. Slowly. Don't have to rush it. My problem I have found is that I misshape the front end of the spindle gouge quite often and I have to reshape it every so often. Or Anthony will come over and say, hey, this shape stinks, and I'll have to change it, so. Okay, that's enough sharpening. Now, I know it's sharp when I run my finger over the edge like that. I can feel the burr here on the edge of the, of the tool. Let's turn that off. Now I'm ready, I can take this, uh, off, this tool gauge off and I'm, I'm ready to turn. It would be more fun if the audience was here with us right now because they could ask questions. <laughs> uh, and on this lathe, how do I stop this from moving? That spindle lock. That right there, I got it. I could make jokes. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, sir. Yep. So, Mel, you're from the Independence Group, right? The Turners. Yeah. What? Uh, what made them think about having a blind guy turn at their, their turning? 
at their at their as a demo for their group. Well, we knew Anthony had uh, been teaching from blind. Yeah. I don't know, and we just uh, contacted Anthony and in hopes that maybe you'd be willing to uh, show us. Show us, yeah. You know, show okay. us how. A blind guy does it. Yeah. Well, it's no, it's no. not much different. <laughs> <laughs> no, it isn't. But, uh, yeah. uh, show us how non-handicapped we are, you know, or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that you know, we don't we make excuses, you know, for not being able to do something. Right. You know. Right. But it's good to see somebody overcome that. Okay. And encourage us. Yeah. Well, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Good. I was just curious. All right. As I'm sitting here thinking turning, I'm thinking what might be interesting. One of the things I do a lot is I'm touching the nose of the tool a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I touch it tenderly. I kind of keep it. It gets warm. Yeah, you're right. It does get, you're thinking, ah, it gets hot. It does get hot. So I'm, I tenderly guide it, and uh, I try to make my, my strokes a little shorter maybe so it doesn't build up as much heat. And it's still, it gets a lot of, it's a lot of friction going on there. It does build up heat, but I do try to keep out, I keep behind the cutting part, of course, but I am just grabbing it. I'm, I'm right there and it just builds up. One of the things that's nice is I, I get a lot of sawdust and I get a lot of shavings right there and it keeps it a little cooler for me so I can, I can touch a little longer. Yes. You mentioned uh, something about a design feature. Um, <clears throat> how do you get your uh, design ideas and translate that to what you're making? That, that, oh, that's a great question. I like it. Thank you. Um, Anthony and I discovered early on, just through the process of going blind, I suddenly, as a visual person, I was a photographer and videographer for Hallmark for 36 years, so I had notebooks of of images or I had videos that I would go to and, and look at for reference and it's like suddenly being blind you don't have any of that so I would have Anthony he we would talk about shapes and the form and really I, I really struggled with that in the beginning I could do straight stuff but I just couldn't so I would have Anthony bring over examples of bowls with different patterns and shapes that he would do and then he would turn me things and he'd say okay now I want you to follow this that, in the beginning, it was real tough to do that, but I, I did get to the point where now I'm, I think I'm better at it. I'm not real good at it, but I, I, I do follow uh, Anthony, and then Anthony is always doing show and tell. Hey, look what I've shown. You know, and I love it when at the club, at the, when we have our meetings, and Jack or Effie or Aaron or Chip or somebody will come by and say, hey, look what I'm doing. You know, 
and then I'll feel it. And then now I'm getting better at remembering, oh, that's a really neat shape. I'll incorporate that in the next bowl I have. So I kind of, it's hard. <laughs> that's a, that's a yeah. tough one. Yeah. You know, um, experience. yeah, I don't, I don't think in 3d very well. I mean, it's just a lot of it. Some of some people do, I and can see stuff and I, I'm getting it sort of kind of. So yeah, it's experience is, you know, the more I do, the better I'm getting. So Good. don't you think Anthony? I think so. Okay. All right. Well, this wood's a lot wetter than I thought it was. Uh -huh. Yeah, I didn't think it was near this wet when I picked it up. I thought, yeah. well, I'll, I'll turn this. Yeah. Hey, Mel, you're getting my good side, right? Yes. Okay, I'm just checking. I just moved to this good side. I forgot to bring my calipers. Um, uh, Anthony introduced me to calipers. I'm getting the thickness because I've blown some bowls up. And in the beginning, in particular, I, all my bowls were really thick. They were primitive and they were thick. And I forgot to bring my calipers today. I was going to ask you about uh, yeah? how you measure. Oh, and here, hey, and look, behold. <laughs> That's what you use? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I can, I can, I can kind of tell, and I usually end up taking the bowl off a couple times, trying to get the, the sidewall the same thickness as the bottom, pretty much as much as I can. I would blow, we'd be at the guild and I'd blow a bowl up and Anthony said, did you use your calipers? And I'd say, no. <laughs> <laughs> I got lazy, I didn't.
Okay, I am hit from it. Oh, is that it? Okay. So I don't throw something at the audience? Right. No, it's so that uh, you can't turn the, under the lip on bowls. <laughs> we didn't think that was safe. <laughs> is that one? No, that worked yeah, out. Okay, yeah. Yes. Sir. I need the key to this chuck over here. Thank you, sir. I think so, four years. But I have not much like that. Maybe it's a piece of sufficient. Self sufficient. Thank you, Anthony. the house and do this more often. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At home, instead of having Anthony, I do have a, a, a case, a tool case, it's, you know, all these drawers. So one drawer's got gouges and the yeah, next one's got scrapers and the next one's got carbide tip, you know. So. Going away from home is a problem. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know. Anthony and, and all you guys, you know, you see a little detail and you would take the tool and, and trim it off. Sometimes I can do that, sometimes I can't do that. There's a little sharp edge in here that I don't like and I'm just going to sand it off. This is soft enough wood, I'm going to sand it off because I'm better at sanding than using the tool, getting the fine detail. That's a thing that I really, I can do a lot of work, but some of the detail work that all you guys do and some of the pieces you produce, I'm getting there all the time. With every piece I turn, I get a little bit better, I hope. But sometimes that detail work is a little bit beyond my pay grade, and, and I just 
do whatever it takes to make it work, and it, it, it does turn out okay. So. Hey, can you? There's a centrifugal sander over there. I think it is. Can I bring it? Oh, yes. Nice. Thanks so much. Uh -huh. Yeah, perfect. Oh, yeah. Well, here's my bowl. I'm gonna. The thing that I always think about is uh, when you guys at the at the guild bring me stuff and show me stuff, it, and it's just like, oh my gosh. I know that your tools are really, really sharp, probably sharper than what I'm able to make mine. And, and just the, they're just so clean with very little sanding. You guys do a lot better job than I do. I'm getting there all the time, but I, I think I end up doing a lot more sanding than uh, what you do. But uh, I, I, I do, I'm able to produce some stuff I like and, and my friends and neighbors like it. So <laughs> that's what counts, I guess, doesn't it? So there's my bowl. For this evening great. so what else can we say good job well thank you thank you very much if you could feel it you'd feel how soft it is <laughs> <laughs> i will <laughs>